Ah, welcome back. Okay, supply chain benefits. Well, well, well. There are many, many benefits. We could have a list of 20, a list of 10. But for me, I'd like to break it down. I've actually got 10 benefits here, but I've put it under DTTAA. These are all benefits of the supply chain. Documentation cost reduction, transparency across the entire supply chain. There is trust because you have greater immutable nature. Immutable means things cannot be changed once data is put in and a hash algorithm is meted out. And as a result, it incentivizes participants, suppliers to actually put in the correct data on the first try. And this increases the trust in partners because they know that there's, there's this formal system that you are in a formal system, put the data in and do the right thing the first time. Wow. The whole purpose of the system being formal, immutable, that you cannot change once data goes in, it makes you pay more attention. And by paying more attention, that increases trust all around. Ah, then there's an audit trail. You know me, I'm an accounting trained. I love audit trails. What is an audit trail? When I go to a company and do an audit, I want to see all the documents that connect towards a certain transaction. I want proof that a transaction took place. Ah, and so we have full unbroken providence of assets throughout the supply chain. What do we mean by unbroken? At any one time, we can see where assets are physically. At any one time, we can see the documentation that supports the certification of particular assets or the approvals of particular assets. Finally, there's accessibility through the connectivity of IoT devices with data shared across the entire network. You can also allow or disallow devices to enter into different stages of the blockchain network. Assuming the blockchain network is at different stages of the supply chain. Ah, wow, there's so much you can do here. Yes, so just keep in mind DTTAA or DAT, D-A-A-T-T. I think I'd do better than that. Anyway, good enough for now. Keep that in mind. These are the benefits for the supply chain. Wow. Let's have a look at the benefits for another angle. The benefits I just showed you just then were we're just going through logically to think about or theoretically these are the benefits that we should be able to obtain. But when you go out into the field and you talk to a supply chain manager, you talk to a procurement manager, you talk to production managers, you talk to logistics agents, they may not talk in terms of that terminology. They are more likely to talk in terms of the terminology of what we got here on this slide. That is, number one, traceability. Can they find something when they want to find it? Can they find where a shipment is by going online? That's what they want to be able to find. Dispute resolution. What if there's a quality problem with the shipment? Can they trace it back to the factory? Can they trace a dispute with a customer to find out whether that should be traced back to poor handling under FBA, you know, for fulfillment by Amazon? Or was it caused by the factory getting those goods to the ship? Okay, so it's about tracing where the dispute or the problem occurred. What about cargo integrity and security? All right, same idea. Again, we want we do not want any hacks of physical objects on the ship, but also we don't want hacks of the physical documentation, the documentation associated with the shipping. We want to make sure that all the documentation is there when the goods arrive in the destination country so they don't get held up by customs. You don't get fined by customs or rejected by customs. There are problems with digitalization. That is, there's so much documentation when it comes to shipping and getting all the approvals and certifications, etc. It would be good if it was all digitalized so then we can just keep it all in one area and we know where to go when a problem occurs. What about compliance? This is more of an extension of digitalization. Compliance with various 
regulations in the EU, or we're talking about the USA. What about the compliance with various mass regulations in Western developed world? That's a huge issue right now. And finally, we've got trust and stakeholder management. These are pain points. These are same pain points about whether you trust all the different stages of the supply chain. Do you trust all the different parties involved to input the correct data? Do you trust the compliance documentation that the supplier gives you? How do you know that they have given you the correct documentation? Can you verify that? All of these items can be digitalized and be put into the blockchain. But these are pain points of the supply chain. Now, I'm not saying that all of these six pain points are ever present on every supply chain. It may be in any one supply chain, there's one or two of these pain points that is standing out and they are just wanting to be solved. And maybe the blockchain can just solve one or two of these issues. And then the blockchain can be determined to be useful and beneficial. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, now let's have a look at how these benefits may apply in the supply chain. Like, are there any, are there surveys out there, academic consulting surveys out there, that tell us to what extent are blockchains used? Or to what extent are these various pain points out there? All right, like there's six pain points here, but they're not all equally painful. All right, some are more painful than others. Let's try and answer this question, shall we? So let's have a look. This was a survey of suppliers, a survey of shippers and 3PLs to find out the areas of interest for blockchain. And the most common area is traceability and the movement history of components so they can deal with product recalls. And that's a big thing in the EU and USA at the moment. What was next was overall visibility of the data and sharing with parties. And then the means to satisfy regulatory requirements or legal needs. Wow. And then ensure ethical compliance, like the source of origin or labor. Wow. So these are the big pain points or the areas that shippers and 3PLs think blockchain can become immediately useful in solving. So keep that in mind, all right? Those six pain points I talked about earlier, they are not all equally painful. Here are the ones that are most painful in this graph here. Let's, let's have a look at another survey of parties involved in global supply chains and how they are using blockchains. Here we have a consulting survey of 447 organizations asking them about how or what they perceive to be a beneficial use of blockchain in the management of their supply chain. And what they found was that the likelihood of high adoption of blockchain is in the area of tracking provenance. That is making sure that the goods that are being tracked are really the goods that we think are being tracked. In other words, there are no fakes in the goods that we are tracking. Contracts management is another area that they cited as being very useful for blockchain use and having a digital thread. Okay, other areas of adoption are in the area of tracking critical parameters or tracking component quality or the prevention of counterfeits or just basic tracking of production. As you can see, the areas of low adoption may be with regards to carbon credits or enabling pricing transparency. So you can see that there are differences in the value to which blockchain can be of use in the supply chain. And so just keep that in mind and think about whenever you are consulting for the use of blockchain in the supply chain, it's all about thinking about what is the greatest pain point that the blockchain will give us the, big, the biggest bang for the buck. 
And that's what we're all about as consultants. It's not about saying the blockchain will solve everything equally. Or it's about solving 20% of those problems that give you 80% of the pain. Ah, so keep that in mind. Okay, next, I want to simplify things a little bit more. So I talked about the benefits, D-A-A-T-T. -T, and I talked about the pain points. And next, I looked at some surveys of users in global supply chains, in production, in distribution, to show you, to demonstrate that not all pain points are the same. There are differences in the value that can be provided by a blockchain in the supply chain across different pain points. Okay, here is what a supply chain really is about. Have a look at the left-hand side, vertical axis. Notice it's all about there is product flow, there is process flow, information flow, and of course, we wouldn't be in business without cash flow, yes. And then on the top horizontal part, we have traceability, dispute resolution, cargo integrity and security, digitalization and compliance. So we've got most of those pain points captured along the top. And so we could have a look at a comparison of where those pain points are solved and what aspect of the supply chain those pain points are going to be providing value on. For example, when it comes to traceability, we're really focusing on the product flow and the information flow. But when it comes to dispute resolution or cargo security, we're really focusing on process flow and product flow for cargo and information flow for dispute resolution. Notice that, Inter interesting that dispute resolution is not about the product flow, it's the process flow and information flow. Because people dispute where things are in a different process. People dispute whether you have the right information, the right compliance information, the right shipping information. Ah, cargo integrity and security is very important for the product and the process. But when it comes to digitalization, it's all about the final saving and controlling of the transaction in the supply chain. Ah, so basically, once goods are shipped and then sold and delivered to a consumer, what's left is the audit flow of the information and the cash flow. Yes, the cash flow. I'm the accountant, I like cash flow. All right, and then we have compliance, the last part. What do we mean by compliance? Just to make sure that we have followed all of the requisite processes. For a factory to be in compliant with a particular code in the EU, in a particular code in the USA, it's likely they have to document their processes. And that's why compliance is very, very big on process flow, not necessarily the product flow or the information flow. Ah, yes, we've got information about certification that a factory can do something, but if we want to have provenance or traceability that the factory did actually do it, we want to have something set up like a record that a process flow was undertaken by the factory in terms of its quality control system. And that's what we mean by focusing compliance on the process flow. Ah, wow. Just uh, relax. Don't, don't get too bogged down with all of these grids. The point again is to, we need to think logically about exactly where in the supply chain and how in the supply chain the blockchain may help in improving the efficiencies and creating those benefits I talked about, the DAT, the D-A-A-T-T, -T, okay, the documentation, the audit, okay, authenticity, okay, the traceability, remember that, okay, and the trust, okay. 
those five areas of benefits do not just come by applying all and having ticks on all of these boxes. So Neil, can you give me some more specific examples of how we can save money by using the blockchain in the supply chain? Okay, so let's have a look at this next table where I show you the areas in which we can make improvements to save money, improve the bottom line for global supply chains. First of all, if we can improve traceability and digitalization by using the blockchain, then we can have quicker and cheaper transactions. Through traceability, we can also have greater transparency in auditing and tracking and tracing. Also through traceability, we can have more automation and reducing of counterfeit goods. Just another example of compliance, I mentioned that in the last slide, we can help compliance, it helps in the transparency and auditing because then you can determine whether a product complies with a particular standards or regulations of the country that you are importer of record in. And also it can help prevent compliance violations. Wow, digitalization not only helps quicker and cheaper transactions, but also reduces human error and helps in automation. Cargo integrity and security helps to track and trace helps reducing counterfeit goods. As you can see, dispute resolution helps in preventing compliance violations and in reducing human error. As you can see, again, these pain points along the top help create benefits in different ways. Okay, they are applying to those different benefits that I mentioned earlier. What we're going to do now is go to the third part of today's lecture.